All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to mod the Eoshin VR006 with a Fat Shark module. That'll take 5.8 gigahertz with a nice little cover and also the 2.4 gigahertz Fat Shark modules. It'll take any kind of Fat Shark module, which is really nice. And uh, it's absolutely proper with the 3D printed parts. And if you turn off the goggle, the module turns off and all you have to do is we're not going to do any internal modifications except solder three wires and we'll be accessing the fat shark module through the AV input so you just choose the AV input which would be this one but it's soldered inside and we can access it now if you want to see how awesome this little 2.4 gigahertz uh, module is it's pretty insane so let's just check this out so this is booting currently because the goggle is turning on all right, so I'm going to go into the menu and we should see the menu on there once we choose the correct uh, input here. Now I'm going to switch the input. There we go. So now I'm actually switching through this. What does it say? Band scanner. Now the VR006 doesn't have something of this nature. So this is currently the OSD coming from this Fat Shark module, which is really, really nice as you can tell right there. So it's just absolutely phenomenal. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So stay tuned and let's just get started. Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we're going to do a Fat Shark mod to the Eoshin VR006. Now, I will be testing the 2.4 GHz new Fat Shark module from Furious FPV on this once we complete the setup in an upcoming video. And we're also going to be setting up a normal 5.8 GHz Fat Shark module. Now, a lot of people always ask me, well, what's the benefit of this? Because, for example, this one just has one receiver inside of it. However, these have two, if you can see that, one and two. So you'll have a diversity receiving module, thus giving you better range, better video, and better penetration. So this is the reason why we do such a things. And also now we're getting the 2.4 gigahertz Fat Shark module. Now currently on box goggles, there's nothing that runs 2.4 gigahertz. And this is also a reason why you'd wanna do that. If people are gonna start switching down to 2.4 gigahertz, or if there's a module that you really love, but you don't have $500 for a, for a Fat Shark goggle, you can pick up one of these. And uh, I'm modding almost everything I could find in the market. Now also, before we begin, some of the components that we're gonna need is an Eoshin VR006. Hopefully you have a 3D printer because currently I'm printing the enclosure for this. The way it's going to be is we're going to drill two holes in this guy, mount this here and uh, place that in this. This will be here. There's also a cover that's currently printing and you'll see that towards the end of the video. We're also going to need a switch so we can switch the module on and off, which is going to be this guy. I'll leave a link to everything down below. Go ahead and check those out. And this one, make sure you get the same exact one because these come in different things and they all look alike. Some are for three volts and this is a step up converter. This will step up the 3.7 volts to 5 volts so it can boot up the Fat Shark module here. So, if you do also, if you guys do like this content, please consider joining my Patreon. It'll really support the channel and I need all the support I can possibly get to continue bringing you uh, content such as this. I really don't want to look into finding another job. So, that would be really great if you guys can consider just a dollar to five a month. That would go an absolute long way. Any support is really much needed. So, enough talking. Let's just jump to it. All right, so first step, we want to take apart the VR006, the four screws on the bottom, and you also want to remove the nuts that are on the SMA port. Next, I highly recommend you just slit the uh, foam like I did instead of having to remove all of it. Next, you want to go ahead and remove the button connector right there, so just be careful doing that. And also, you want to go ahead and remove the power as well. After those are done, then you want to start easily and slightly removing both the LCD and the board together so you don't rip the ribbon cable because if that rips that's connected to the internal of the LCD and you're going to have to go look for a spare so be extra careful and it'll just come out nice and easy. Next you want to go ahead and pop off the ribbon cable. There's these two black pieces the one all the way to the edge of the board just lift it up slightly it'll pop up like a hatch and you can just remove it. Now we're going to need three wires we're going to need VBAT ground and video and the video we're going to be taking it from the AV input which is up top through that connector and it's going to be the top right pad. All right so I'm going to use these JST type connectors and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert the wire through the case because later on once it's soldered we're not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to be using this for the positive ground and also the video. So right now we're gonna do the positive and ground first and then we'll move on to the video. So now I've gone ahead and soldered the ground and the V-bat. Now what's so cool about these pads here is that when you boot up the goggle, they provide power. So we're not gonna need that switch that I mentioned in the beginning of the video, which is really nice. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the second JST connector for the video and I'm gonna insert it through the case like I did with the power and also trim one of the wires off so I know this is the video cable and I won't mess up when I install them later. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and solder the video wire to that pad on the AV input right there, which is gonna be on that bottom one or the top of the board right there. All right, so now we can put everything basically back into the goggle itself, because we're, we're done here. All we're gonna need is to create two holes, which I'll do with an X-Acto knife from the outside and just thread them with an M3 screw. All right, so now the next step is we're gonna grab our PCB here and I'll leave a link down below. Make sure you have your female headers uh, soldered to the right side and make sure you have the exact pin count so you don't mix and match. You don't miss a pin by mistake when you insert the fast shark module so you don't burn it. Now I'm going to start by soldering in the JSD connectors to the left side of the board here. Next, I'm going to go ahead and grab the step up converter. Now make sure you get the same exact one in the link because there's ones for different voltages. So this one has three pins. It has VO, ground and VI. VO is the voltage out, the red wire that's positive that's going to be going to the fast shark module. VI is the input that's coming in, the red wire input that's coming in from the uh, goggle. And the middle one is a common ground between them. So it's the ground for the in and the out as well. So what I'm going to do is route the wires through the PCB down to the left connector because that's going to be my power connector. Next, I'm going to go ahead and solder them to the correct polarity on the back. Then I'm going to grab the VO wire and as well as the second ground wire and route them to the Fat Shark mod pin out here. Now the one all the way on the bottom is VCC, which would be the VO, the red wire. And if you go up to the third one, that's going to be ground, which I'll route the black wire to coming out of the step up converter. Next, I'm going to grab a yellow wire and I'm going to solder it to the fourth pin out on the opposite side of the VCC. And then I'm going to route that wire directly to the video JST connector, which is routed to the AV input uh, inside the goggle. All right, so everything seems to be in. I'm just going to give it some power here. Now be careful because the power and the button connector are exactly the same size. So make sure you align it perfect with the hole here. Buttons here. There we go. And uh, next thing we want to do is I think if we bring in a Fat Shark module, it should boot, I believe because we took direct battery power. I don't know where the battery power is coming from currently. Let's see. All right, so that's nice. It's not booting unless the battery is dead. So we might not even need the switch after all. So that's really good. So we just wait for that to boot. That is perfect. So yeah, we don't need to switch at all. The place where we took it from is actually getting the power directly from the circuit, which allows the voltage to go through. So now if we stop it like so, that is perfect. That is actually really, really awesome. All right, so this is basically, we're basically done. All we need to do is insert two holes now. So this switch is basically useless. And um, yeah, I'll make a new 3D designed one without a hole for it. So now what we wanna do is we wanna actually grab this and uh, somehow use double-sided tape to stick it into place or use super glue as you please. I'm gonna be using double-sided tape here. This is really good double-sided tape. I get it from Tesco. Sometimes they don't have it, sometimes they do. Okay, so we wanna make sure, you wanna make sure this is to the left and these are right here. So we can drill holes out and you could even use double-sided tape to hold it in a place here if you wanted to. Uh, but the way I designed it was to go right next to the Eosheen logo, as you can tell right there, and you can drill those holes and it'll just be perfect. Okay, so that's good. This one, we can cover it with some heat shrink or something, but I'll probably do that in a little bit later. Or, you know, I'll just put also double-sided tape below it because this is uh, also non-conductive. The holes here are going to be M3 sized holes, but I think even M2 will be good enough. You might have to make these holes a little bit bigger on the 3D printed part. So yeah, all right, let's see what's the next step now. All right guys, so now what I did was I just took an X-Acto knife and I just went through, I didn't go all the way through here. Uh, I just got in pretty deep until I saw it kind of bulge out from the back and then I just got an M3 screw, screwed it in, opened up that hole nicely. Now all I gotta do is just align it, bring in my second screw here and then just uh, thread it through, which is what I'm doing now. And the 3D printed part is just exactly enough to be threaded, so it's gonna fit really nice and snug here. So that's, that's a huge plus also. So as you can tell, let's just zoom in here. So I'm just double checking that I have it aligned here. And these screws might be a little bit too big right now. And what you can do if you needed something on the other side, if, if it's not gripping very good, uh, what you could do is uh, get the nylon the nylon nuts. I'm pretty sure most of you have nylon nuts. <laughs> it's 
So you could use those as well. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty good. So maybe next time we could do a little bit more modifications. I want to make sure this is not going to hit anything because uh, that would be very bad if it did. So yeah, maybe I, c I couldn't find any shorter screws currently. So I'm going to go all the way through here. All right, so that's all closed. So I'm going to go ahead and install my screws here so I don't lose them. All right, guys, so this is how the mod should be completely set up and finished. Now, to prove that it's working without even using a quadcopter, what I brought is the new Furious FPV 2.4 gigahertz module, which has an inbuilt OSD so you can see RSSI and all these beautiful things. Now, to use such a thing, you're totally fine. I had this in mind in the beginning, so you don't even need this. This is for the normal modules, which is a really nice cover to have. For example, if you're using that uh, real ACC, you know, the ones that d just come like this, you'll be totally fine with this type of cover. With this one, you don't even have to remove it out of its cover. You can just go ahead and insert it in. Okay. Okay, so this is the 2.4 gigahertz version. And again, if you don't know what this stuff is, uh, any Fat Shark module will work here. So as you can tell, look at that, it looks pretty sick. So it looks pretty badass actually right now. All right, so let's boot this guy and see if we can access the menu, the OSD of this. So let's go ahead and boot this up. Okay, as you can tell, our Fat Shark module is currently booting, which is really nice. It's kind of nose heavy now, but everyone was telling me with wings, it's nice. It's better to be nose heavy. So this is <laughs> currently nose heavy now. All right. So we have the module here and now we have a blank screen. Now, where are we? We are currently in normal mode, antenna mode. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the AV input. So this is the current inbuilt module here. Hold on. I didn't put the buttons right correctly. God damn it. All right. So there we go. Now it's on AV input. Now you're getting a black screen, but that's totally fine. So I'm just trying to get it to focus just right. Hold on. I'm going to press the button in the front here. There we go. So now we are on the 2.4 gigahertz fat shark module here, which is really nice. Now, if you don't believe me, see antenna bar graph. Now, if you flip it over, You'll see antenna, bar graph, OSD layout. And uh, if I go back, I forgot how to go back. There we go. OSD layout, OSD layout. So it's really nice. And if you wanted to switch back, all you got to do is switch from the AV input back to now we're back on the inbuilt receivers here, which is really good and really nice to see. So as you can tell here, now you can use any Fat Shark module your heart desires, which is really, really nice and uh, really, really awesome. So as you can tell, it was working and uh, we'll be doing the field testing very soon on this. Now the inbuilt one is just a single receiver and now you have diversity options and you have many, many more options on such an absolutely cheap <laughs> goggle, which is pretty crazy. And this is a really nice execution. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And uh, if you guys do like this content, please consider joining my Patreon. It'll really support the channel, allow me to keep doing things, more things of this nature. I know you guys really love these. And uh, these are really awesome little mods and stuff. I still have a couple more goggles to finish, like the JJ Pro also, which is a really nice cheap goggle, which I'll be doing a mod similar to this. And I'll uh, probably make some kind of universal design in a PCB for all kinds of uh, uh, modules. For example, if you needed a step down, if it needed, we'll get into that later on. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If it was really useful and you really did enjoy it, please consider joining my Patreon or use the links down below. Those greatly support the channel. And um, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.